Hello, welcome to the Great Basin Plant Material Center here in Fallon, Nevada. My name is Christopher Bernal, and I am the manager of this facility. Today, I'd like to talk to you about Acnathrum hymenoides, or Indian ricegrass. Indian ricegrass is a cool season native bunch grass that can be found throughout the Western United States. It can grow at uh, elevations as low as 2,000 feet up to 10,000 feet and can be found in such varied ecosystems like the salt desert scrub, uh, greasewood flats, pinyon junipers, and ponderosa savanna. Indian ricegrass has many uses on our rangelands. It is great for preventing erosion, it is a wonderful forage for livestock and wildlife, and the seeds are used by a wide variety of birds and rodents. Because of this, Indian ricegrass is a great addition for a lot of rangeland planting, which means you need a lot of seed. Currently, there are six commercial releases on the market that have been developed by the NRCS and ARS. And right now, I have all six of them behind me. Take a look at these six releases. Really take a look at them. You can see that some have more seeds, some are bushier, some are thinner. These were developed for different purposes in mind and I'll go over them right now. First we have ribstone. Ribstone was originally collected out of Canada and is specifically adapted for the Montana Saskatchewan area. Uh, one of the traits that was bred for it was narrower glooms. Now glooms are modified leaves that kind of hold the uh, flower and the seed together. Sometimes you have wide angles, sometimes you have narrow angles uh, with the Indian rice grass. Uh, Indian rice grass here has a habit of dropping the seed as soon as it's mature, which means if you're a farmer you can lose the seed and lose your harvest. So this was bred for the narrower glooms to hold those seeds on as long as possible. Now typically this is not an issue on the rangeland, but if you're a farmer trying to collect as much seed as possible, then losing the seed as soon as they're mature is a problem. So this was bred to try to get rid of that, that issue. Next we have White River. White River was collected out of uh, kind of central western Colorado. It was specifically designed to have smaller seed and to germinate more efficiently. One of the issues with uh, Indian rice grass is that uh, often they are hard seeded, meaning that it won't germinate that first year. It might take two, three, four, five years to germinate. This was bred so that it would be um, to get rid of that dormancy and so it would germinate as fast as possible. Its uh, habitat is for Nevada and several other uh, Intermountain West states. This rice grass here is known as Paloma. It was originally collected out of kind of south central Colorado and is the oldest release of Indian rice grass that's available. It was designed to be uh, used for the southwestern range of the Indian rice grass and is currently a staple for kind of the southern range of any of our conservation plantings. Next we have Nezpar. Nezpar was collected in the 30s and is uh, designed to grow well in the northern half of the Indian rice grasses range. So here in the cold desert, Nezpar does great. You go higher in elevation, higher in latitude into uh, even the Pacific Northwest, Nezpar becomes uh, recommended more than Paloma. Next to that is Rimrock. Rimrock was collected out of Montana and designed to be more cold hardy than Nezpar. So if you are in even higher latitudes and colder locations, oftentimes Rimrock would be recommended as opposed to Nesbar. And last here we have Star Lake. Now Star Lake is actually my favorite just because of the symmetry of the plant, but it was originally collected out of New Mexico and is designed uh, for the Colorado Plateau ecosystems. Uh, it's also uh, selected for small seed and early germination, similar to White River. And so if you're doing a seeding over in um, the Colorado Plateau area, this is the one uh, that's often recommended. Now you might wonder in general, which one would we recommend for you to plant in your rangeland site? The answer is that it depends and please talk to your NRCS field office to uh, know exactly where you're planting and what options you have. But if I were to be really general for just Nevada, I would say if you're in the southern half of Nevada, especially as you get lower in elevation and warmer, Paloma is a great staple to work with. 
If you're a little bit higher up, say in uh, our cold desert and higher, then Nezpar is another one to go with. I would not do, um, I would not use rim rock, ribstone, or Star Lake. Even though Star Lake's my favorite, I would not use that just because they're not specific to our area and would probably not uh, do very well. Now you might be wondering, why do we have all six releases next to each other? What's the point? Well, we are working on a seventh release. One that we hope to be more drought tolerant than all of these that we have right here. And I'll talk about that in our next video. Thank you.